Hey everybody, this is Tommy Rosen, and I'm excited to share a protocol with you, and this is the Recovery 2.0 protocol for getting off of opioids. An opioid is any of the drugs that come from the poppy plant originally, that's opium or heroin, Vicodin, Percocet. Any of the opioids are painkillers. They kill physical pain, and we are very, very happy to have them on the planet Earth when we're in an extreme physically painful situation, such as being in a war situation or a traumatic accident of some kind. We are very happy to have the opiate family available to us because they work. They really kill uh, physical pain. They make it possible to get to break the pain cycle and to begin to heal. Interestingly, this class of drugs also deals with emotional pain. In fact, all pain that you might experience as a human being is taken away when you take this class of drugs. Interestingly also that the more of these drugs that you take, the more you actually have to take for their effects to work, for you to feel their effects. That's called building a tolerance. So we very quickly, very quickly, build a tolerance to uh, drugs in the opiate family. The more that we take, the more we have to take them. Eventually, we become physically addicted to these drugs. When you're physically addicted, now you don't really feel a sense of being high from the drug any longer. What happens is you actually become normal again when you take the drug. It's a way of managing the somewhat horrendous biochemistry that you've created in your brain and body by taking so much of these opioid drugs that you now have to just take them in order to get back to a normal state of being able to function in the world. And if you don't get the drugs uh, to be able to get back to that state of normalcy when you're fully addicted like this, it's about the most horrendous, most painful, most uncomfortable thing that you could imagine on the planet. It's literally like being on fire. So imagine you are on fire. What wouldn't you do to put the fire out? Well, you'd do anything. You'd do anything at all. You would steal. You would act in any kind of way you had to. You would manipulate in any kind of way you had to in order to put that fire out. That's what it's like to be a heroin addict or a, an addict to any of the opiate drugs. Let's say that you come to that very fortunate place where you're ready now to stop. What do you do? Okay. I'm just going to assume that you've got a full-blown opiate addiction and that you have to have these drugs in order just to function at this point and you're now realizing it and you're recognizing like I can't go on living my life like this and I want to change. There's only really a couple of things that you can do. The first part of the process is going to be a physical detox off of opiates. I strongly recommend that you get medical support for that detox. Here's why. Number one, you are going to appreciate some of the pharmacological, that's drug-based solutions to help you through the difficult period that you're about to face. Five to 14 days of extreme discomfort, the likes of which I would not wish on anybody. To alleviate some of those symptoms of discomfort, there are many drugs that exist now to help somebody through the, the, the period of withdrawal. The drug that I most want to discuss right now is Suboxone. Suboxone is like a wonder drug for helping a person to get off of an opiate, to, get, to go through that withdrawal process. Unfortunately, I believe that the drug was only meant to be used 7 to 14 days. Unfortunately, it is now being prescribed for long-term use. And there are reasons why doctors decide to do that and why pharmaceutical companies uh, push for that kind of long-term use. I don't want to get into that discussion here. I will simply say 
Suboxone is a wonderful thing to help somebody who's addicted to an opioid go through that withdrawal process and get off in the best of all circumstances as far as I am concerned. After 14 days maximum, you then get off of Suboxone and you're now in a path of recovery. And that path of recovery includes things like the 12 steps. It may include inpatient treatment or outpatient treatment. It may include uh, various forms of therapy, all that kind of stuff. But the main thing is, is you're on a path of recovery and you're engaged in that recovery and you're getting support, lots of support from people because you're going to need it if you're gonna stay off uh, heroin and other opioids. So if you can get medical support through the withdrawal process, that first seven to 14 days, that's gonna be a wonderful thing. There are other drugs involved as well in that process uh, where people are, are doing what they can to make you feel comfortable through that process. Often also, you may opt for an inpatient treatment facility that also is connected with or has a medical detox facility in-house. So you can sort of knock two birds out with, with one stone by getting your medical detox and you're in treatment right there at the same time. Really great if you're committed and, and have the money to afford those services. <clears throat> but let's say you don't have the good fortune or the willingness to go into a hospital or a treatment facility. What do you do? Well, quite frankly, you find a room, preferably somebody who really, really loves you and cares for you, who is going to sit with you through the horror of the next five to 10 days. And they're going to do things like make food for you, clean up your, your piss and your shit and your vomit. They're going to put cold compresses on your head when you need them. They're going to, to wait on you hand and foot to help you get through this period of dread. What's really happening in the body is that your brain and your body, the cells of your body, are detoxing from something they've become extremely used to. We've set up a, a, a condition in the body that's so painfully uh, addicted, so painfully in need of these substances, that when we remove them for those first number of days until the detox is complete, well, you kind of feel like you have something like the bubonic plague mixed with a migraine headache, mixed with a 104 degree temperature, mixed with something that makes you have diarrhea and makes you throw up. Uh, you get hungry, but you can't really eat. You want to go to the bathroom, but you may be constipated at times. It, it's, you're all over the map, and your body is, quite frankly, in a state of disarray, like the worst disarray you can imagine. It's no wonder that nobody wants to quit and go through this process. It's not hard to understand why a heroin addict wouldn't want to go through that process, which is, again, why I stress it's really helpful to have medical support during this time. But if you're in that room and you've got that person to take care of you, uh, you have to realize that during that period of time, you're going to be thinking one primary thought most of those days. I want to leave here. I want to get my drug of choice. And that thought is going to be the predominant thing that you're facing pretty much 24-7. You're going to be scheming, manipulating, creating stories, telling lies, and that person who's taking care of you needs to understand all that. And they're going to look at you in the face and they're going to say, guess what? You're not leaving. We're staying here until this process is complete. I will take care of you, but you're not leaving this room. You're not getting out of here until you're detoxed. Once you're detoxed, we'll have another conversation. So you go through that, and I've been through that with a few people now over these years, and it's a very unpleasant thing. And I've been there myself as I speak from personal experience, just how uh, unpleasant this is. So you see, I tell you this not to scare anybody, but I actually want you to succeed. I have seen people get sober by going into a hotel room and sweating it out for five days. I've even seen people do it alone without the support of a human being that could take care of them there. It ain't pretty, but up against a lifetime of heroin addiction, it's, it's the better choice. Now what happens? 
after three or four days, you start to feel a little bit better. But that mental, that mental thing, that, that phenomenon of craving is very strong still. And it may remain strong for a little while to come. So immediately, you must, one must absolutely throw themselves into a program of recovery right away. 12-step programs, inpatient treatment. If you can get it, I strongly suggest it. Getting out of your normal routine, out of your normal community, the environment where you've been using drugs is going to be so important. It will stack the odds in your favor uh, of being successful uh, with this attempt to become sober and ultimately happy, content, and free. You need to know it's possible. You need to know that it's possible. And what you must have around you are examples of victory. Almost every day, you have to have somebody around you that says, hang in there. I've been there. I know what it's like. You can get through this. So you put yourself in the middle of 12-step meetings or, or a community of people that can support you who understand this thing. You put yourself around doctors and healers. You put yourself around mentors and sponsors and therapists. And you get a little momentum. You detox. You're now physically detoxed off of the opiate of your choice. This is an incredible opportunity for you to take that to the next level, which is to begin to get recovery. True recovery can only really begin once you're detoxed and once you've committed yourself to each day approaching your recovery the same way you would have gone after your drug of choice just a few days before. I'm a yoga teacher, some of you know that. And I look to the saints and the sages in the past for good information. And there was a saint, an amazing yoga, yoga teacher named Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna said, approach illumination, which we can look at as recovery. Approach illumination, approach recovery. Like a person whose hair is on fire would approach a pond. Just the same way you felt like you were on fire because you needed heroin or you needed your drug of choice, that's how you go after your recovery. With that same intensity, with that same singleness of purpose, I must have this thing called recovery so that I can be free. And furthermore, so that you can enjoy your life and sing the song that you came here to sing. As an addict, Stuck in this kind of addiction, your choices are very few. When you become free, the power of choice is restored. And you can begin to choose habits, relationships, experiences for yourself, which will bring you ultimately an incredible sense of joy and purpose and aliveness. If you're watching this and you're stuck in heroin addiction right now, don't wait another day. If you're stuck in any kind of opiate addiction, Oxycontin, whatever it is, don't wait another day. Go through this process of detox. Find a group of people who can support you. Get into recovery. And buckle up. The most extraordinary ride awaits you. I wish that for you. And if we can be of support to you in any way here at Recovery 2.0, come find us. We're all over the web, easy to access. So, the horror of opiate addiction can be done for you. And it can be done for anyone that you love as well. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a little bit difficult at first. But it will get easier, and then it will become joyful. That's been my experience. Take good care, and uh, I'll see you on this incredible road of recovery.